So much for coming. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have the roll call, please? Sure. Kellogg. Here. Shoemaker. Here. Vaughn? Here. Poland? Here. Hofstetter? Here. And Cotton? Here. Do we have a motion to excuse Nate from tonight's meeting as he's still on vacation? So moved. Second. How about Hofstetter? Poland? Aye. Hofstetter? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Shoemaker? Vaughn? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. And Con? Aye. Okay, so our community spotlight, um, everything is kind of the uh, same. Our bicentennial meeting is the 17th. The tree planting is the 19th down at Deer Run at one. Um, the only thing that has changed from last time is June 15th, the Walk in the Past Oak Hill Cemetery, Cemetery Tour at 2 p.m. Parking will be in the Millersburg Elementary school instead of Deer Run Park. They thought it, it would be easier um, to get people over to the cemetery that way rather than from Deer Run. Um, there will be parking for handicapped only up at the cemetery. So that is one change. Um, the Bicentennial, I gave you guys all a rendering of what our mural is going to look like. Are there any comments or is that okay with everyone? So Kelly, what on the far right, or is it just this picture here in the center or? I guess yeah, so, so essentially what is going to happen is um, the whole side of that building is gonna get pressure washed and painted one color. Okay. Um, and then um, this dominoes will be up here and then they will paint probably about this much dark gray to go with what they're doing around the front, okay? Otherwise, the rest of this will all be like off-white color is what I'm being told. Um, and then this will be essentially the focal point will be um, the mural in the middle. So even though it looks like this is, that's what is there right okay. now. But okay. it won't be there. Got it. And the cars aren't part of it. And the cars aren't parked there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that that essentially it's just a picture with the with the rendering on it, so you guys would get an idea of what it would look like. You know, when I first saw the the picture, my the the first thought that came to mind was that the wording on that was so big, it covered up the buildings in the background. That, that, was, my first, that was my first thought. Um, and even as I look at it now, I think it's really big. <laughs> or at least the lettering is. I, I just wondered if it was or could be smaller or maybe. Or, or even just the M. Maybe, maybe make smaller. the M a little bit maybe. smaller. Yeah, maybe. The, we could right. do that. The M is taking up a lot of real estate. We could do that. Yeah, it's covering up that poor building. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good point, Brad. Yeah. 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 Um, we could do that. What do you think? Yeah. We could totally do that. Do you guys agree? Yeah? Make the M a How little smaller. How much room is, gonna, is there going to be empty space to the right could millersburg can that written stuff be at the other side of it and not covering the buildings we don't have enough money for that oh thank you okay. it's sure, it's sure. per square foot i see yeah. i see so okay. makes sense that's I why love, I love 13 by yeah, 20 that, <laughs> you love that i love that yeah i okay. love it yeah. we're gonna need another ten thousand yeah, no, no, if we no, do no, that no, no. We'll, we'll cover the buildings that's fine okay yeah, yeah, all right yeah, i got it okay Looks we good. we can do that we can do that Thank you for your feedback on that. Um, okay, do we have any visitors wish to address council right now? No, okay. Um, do we have a motion to suspend the reading of the minutes? Mm -hmm. I'll second, Con. 
Poland. Aye. Khan. Aye. Kellogg. Yes. Shoemaker. Aye. Vaughn. Aye. And Hofstetter. Aye. Are there any additions or corrections to the, to the minutes? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Hofstetter? Aye. Shoemaker? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Vaughn? Aye. Poland? Aye. And Khan? Aye. Bill Resolution 2024-08, are there any questions on the bills totaling $151,102.82? No. Do we have a motion to pay? I'll make a motion to pay. Con. Second. Con. Aye. Vaughn. Aye. Kellogg. Yes. Shoemaker. Aye. Poland. Aye. And Hofstetter. Aye. Okay, um, reports. Nate is not here, but um, one thing that we need to do tonight, um, Kevin Duff has been on probationary status, and <clears throat> we need a motion to take him off probationary status. I'll make that motion. Second. Hofstetter? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Shoemaker? Aye. Poland? Aye. And Kahn? Aye. Chief? Uh, I don't have much. Uh, we did get our vests in, so when we send the payment, um, we'll make a copy of that, and I'll get my reimbursement for that back in the mail. Uh, we kind of had a busy week from Tuesday's storm, Thursday's gas leak, today's eclipse. Um, not the major, major. Uh, the gas leak was probably the biggest incident. Um, the other two were just kind of keep an eye on the sky. Traffic, you know, today was, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it was kind of like at noon, everybody disappeared. There wasn't even a whole lot of parking along the streets. Um, and it was pretty dead uh, for a while. And then as people came back into the area, then we got our, then we got our traffic back. But um, for the most part, everything went smooth and we didn't have any issues. Um, other than that, uh, I'll have some for executive session to follow up on our security issues. Okay. Thank you to you and everyone who helped get our residents out to the fairgrounds. That was huge help, huge help this week. Also, I would like to thank the commissioners and Jason Troyer with emergency management. They did a lot to help us this week. Um, Bobby. All right, um, March financials were sent out and you all acknowledged that, so thanks for that. And, um, I don't know if now's the time to talk about it. Um, we had a, a couple of topics that we need to cover as far as the transition from when Karen retires to me. And Karen, can you refresh my memory? Uh, there's two things that we need to probably do here this week. Um, signature cards for the banking. Um, currently, it's myself, Brent, and Devon that signs check. <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys are okay, but my recommendation is Keep Devon and Brent <laughs> on the signature cards and add Bobby, remove me, because we're gonna have to be all new signature cards done for, for those two will have to sign too. Um, and then we also, the chief has a credit card and I have one, it has our names on it, but it's still in Norrisburg. So I need to cancel that one and I prefer if they issue a new one for Bobby, because um, we do do things in the office occasionally with like the wastewater plant. They'll have to order something off of Amazon or whatever. So the card stays here and then they sign it out. It doesn't leave the office, but they sign it out that they're using it. So I would suggest that we approve having Bobby um, apply for the credit card to see it. Do we need a motion for both of those? Yeah, because it has to be in the minutes for the bank. Okay. <clears throat> All right, do we have a motion to um, take Karen off and add Bobby to the signatures for the bank, as well as um, cancel Karen's village credit card and issue one in Bobby's name. Shoemaker, I so move. I'll second. <coughs> Shoemaker? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Devon? Aye. 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 <laughs> Devon? <laughs> Devon? <laughs> I know. I said Devon, Devon, and that's not everything. I was like, <laughs> Devon? Sorry about that. Let's do that again. <laughs> it's okay. I'm so sorry. Vaughn. Poland. Offsetter. Con. Goodness. All right. 
Thank you very much. Karen, did you have anything else? No, I didn't. Okay, thank you. Bob? Um, last week, uh, because Dave Hoffman and um, also Nate were on spring break with their families, uh, we didn't get anywhere with the speed limit issue. In the next two weeks, by the next meeting, hopefully we'll find out what we can do to optimize our chances of having ODOT uh, agree with the resolutions that were passed uh, last meeting. So we'll work on that. Working on that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, upcoming committee meetings. We have planning and zoning this week um, on Wednesday at 630. Um, the business and housing committee will be April 16th at 6. And we not till June 10th is our public hearing for the alley vacation. Um, please remember in June we will begin our one meeting per month and it will be the second Monday of June, July, and August at 7 will be our normal meeting time for the summer. So don't forget that. Um, so Bob and I went to the commissioner's engineering meeting out at the fairgrounds um, relating to grants and so I just kind of wanted to bring some notes back to you guys I took a lot of notes there was a lot of talking wasn't there Bob there's mm -hmm. a lot of talking um, but it was good I appreciate um, Chris and Dave doing this because we learned there's millions and millions of dollars out there just floating around so I'm gonna to touch on a few people that were there and things that related to us. That's kind of just what I wrote down. I didn't take notes on the other things. Um, Victoria Beal was there from the Ohio Department of Transportation, Division of Local Technical Assistance Program, the LTAP. Um, she said there are free re webinars. There are actually 750 different courses and in-person trainings pertaining to roadway operations and repairs. So that might be something great for our street department to um, look into. They can also do a road safety audit for additional signage funding if we have a road that has a lot of accidents, like South Washington has a lot of accidents. And so if we are interested in doing more um, signage on that road, um, that is a free program that they offer. Um, Amy Watkins Paw was from the Ohio EPA Division of Environmental and Financial Assistance. Um, they can come in and do free compliance assistance to troubleshoot water and sewer problems. Um, Will Gabberly from the Ohio Public Works, he said um, there is SCI funding available for roads and culverts. Um, there are 100% grants out there available for roads and there are 90% um, project grants available for road projects. So uh, we will be, I'll be talking to Nate, we'll be looking into, into that. Um, Vicki, Dr. Vicki King Maple from the Ohio Mid-Eastern Government Association, Omega, we work with Omega a lot. Um, they are, she kind of explained what they do. They're kind of an extension of our team. They help with the writing and researching, finding grants that will help cover our projects through different entities from the state. Um, she said that they also help with job growth ideas to have greater prosperity for communities. So I thought that that was interesting. I didn't know they did that. Um, Ethan and Matt from the Muskingum Water Conservation District talked about um, they will come in and do flooding and shoreline stabilization projects. So if we have anything with Kilbuck Creek, um, if we have some places where it flooded and washed out, we can call them and they can come in and um, get the shoreline stabilized. They also have um, PWM grants, which is um, Partners in Watershed Management. They have one and a half million dollars and I thought of this for you because um, September 1st is the deadline and there are two routes to that grant. One is the engineering side for bridges and culvert replacements, um, but they also said there is a water side which also includes park expansion. Mm. So that might be something that we could look into with um, Muskingum Water Conservation District for the park down at um, airport. Uh, Pam Ewing from the Rural Community Assistance Partnership, RCAP, um, they have a program that is no cost. They will help um, grant 
they will help with grant funding for infrastructure projects um, to make them more affordable. Um, they also have a free program that they have cameras that will go through sewer lines to determine condition of the lines. Um, Arnie Oliver from the Holmes County Planning Commission talked about the community block grant um, for infrastructure. He is applying for more money to help our downtown businesses and building owners with their renovations, which is great. Um, he also said there's more money coming for uh, vacant structures. So if anyone anywhere in the county has a vacant, has a vacant structure that they would like demolished, um, there's more grant money coming this summer for that. So um, contact the commissioner's office. And then um, Trevor Berger from the Holmes County Soil and Water District um, talked about so water and soil conservation projects. He also said they're doing a chainsaw safety program coming up this summer. So if anybody in town has a chainsaw, that might be a good, good program. They're doing a couple different chainsaw safeties. Um, and they, he warned us that there is a huge amount of poison hemlock popping up throughout the county. So be wary of that. So that was kind of our meeting. Bob, do you have anything else? No, I mean, I'll be negative about the West or the Skingham watershed though. We brought them in here for a meeting. It's been a few years ago. Mm -hmm. They absolutely did nothing to help us on trying to get some debris out of Kilbuck Creek. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to bring that up out there, but I didn't, I didn't want to be nasty. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes facts are facts, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Speaking of uh, demolition of buildings, is, is there a date coming up in the near future for the demolition of the, the white garage that belongs to Village Motors there on the corner, uh, Worcester Road, oh, and Clay Street? I think that is, is, that, <coughs> that is that, I think that's part worse. of their- I think that's on the list. I think that is on their list. Yeah. Is it for this year? Yes. Yeah. yes. It, it looks like it's getting worse. I thought yeah, it was this summer it's supposed to be. Okay, the, the cracks keep getting bigger. Yeah, they, yeah, they do. do. I'm waiting for it to- I know, <laughs> I, I'd hate to see that come on on the street of yeah. course you have the building behind them too okay yeah um so and the last thing i have is an arbor day proclamation whereas in 1872 j sterling morton proposed to the nebraska board of agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees and whereas this holiday called arbor day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in nebraska and whereas Arbor's, Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. Whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our village increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas and beautify our community. Whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Therefore, I, Kelly Hoffey, mayor of the village of Millersburg, do hereby proclaim April 26, 2024 as Arbor Day in the village of Millersburg. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations, dated this eighth day of April, 2024. And I want to thank Brent, and I would like for you to thank the Tree City for going out to the school and having the Arbor, Del Arbor Day cel celebration out there. Do. I think that's a wonderful thing. So thank you for that. Um, no legislation, do we have any old business? I'll touch on old business just a little bit. Um, I, I'm concerned about the, the, the round 30 grant that uh, I keep mentioning from time to time. Um, the, the grant uh, admission is June 1st, and as of today, I checked the website, there is still no amount allocated for each county in the state of Ohio. The, the General Assembly still has not appropriated any, any funds for that, um, which means that, I mean, they, they could still do it any day, but um, my concern is they haven't done it yet. If they haven't, if they don't do it soon, 
that could postpone the admission date. Uh, it could extend it out beyond June 1st. So as I'm going through the grant process, um, I'm trying to be proactive about some things because I don't want to let this one get by us, but um, there's a lot of information about documentation of certain or specific things in the grant. And I think one of the things that we're going to be focusing on is pickleball courts. And one of the things they ask for is documentation from the public on the need, the supply and demand of pickleball courts. And as much as probably each and every one of us has, has spoken to an individual or individuals about the need for pickleball courts, we don't really have any documentation to support the need in the community for the pickleball courts. So one of the things that I, I think I need to, to bring up or advocate for is for people that have an interest in pickleball courts down at Airport Park to email me and just indicate the interest, um, and the need, however you want to word it, that you would like to see um, additional pickleball courts uh, at Airport Park. Um, and if, if you could include in that email to me uh, any information that you might have that would support the need because of people you know that play the sport. Uh, I know here a while back there used to be text messaging that went out to people to say we're going to meet on Saturday morning and I don't know how many people that involved but it would be nice to have some kind of an idea of the number of people that are involved in those kinds of messages um, so that I have some kind of an idea of, of the need or the demand um, for that sport. So I know it's of high interest. People talk to me about it all the time, but there's no documentation to that. And if I could have that documentation in an email and submit that um, or provide that information for the grant, I think that that would be helpful. So if anybody has any questions about that, if there's anything, Melissa, you could put in the, in, on the radio or in the newspaper about that <laughs> now, um, it would be helpful and they can send it to my email address. What is so, that, Brad? Can you give them that? It's brad.con, C-O-N-N, at millersburgohio.com. That's Brad. Dot con at millersburgohio.com. I'm glad you said that twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking we could probably put something on our Facebook page um, and get the word too. out on social media. Maybe mm -hmm. even use our app. Because mm -hmm. I know that, that Nate has, you know, looked into getting estimates for the walkway path and to, to see what it would cost for additional pickleball courts. Um, and I don't know if he's heard anything back on that. And I just don't want to wait till we get down to the wire of finding out what the cost is. I think we're always surprised with how expensive things are. And we've got the surface down there. It's just, in my mind, it's a matter of painting and putting new nets up and eventually, you know, maybe new fences, but, um, we need to get those estimates and try to get those in line. I'd like to have another meeting too, but I didn't want to have a meeting until we got some of those estimates back. So, Brad, yeah, there is a pickleball group on an app called Team Reach that okay. has, and I don't know, I was trying, I thought maybe I could go in and it would tell me how many total people are in the group. There's a whole list of them. That would be really helpful. But I don't know, I could probably go through and count them for you, but <laughs> I'd let you know. But Yeah, if there was, if there's a way I could, look that up and maybe even print it off uh, because if there's any kind of documentation to support the need that we're currently going through um, it'd be nice to submit that for the grant mm -hmm. because I can talk in in generality about oh I know for a fact there's a strong need because people have talked to me that doesn't really hold a lot you know um, when they review 
the applications, but if they see documentations to support that, that's what they want to see, and that's going to give us, you know, more of a point system when they, they allocate any kind of, of awards for this. So, yeah, any information like that that would support the need, the supply, the demand that they're referring to in the grant would be helpful. Do you have a date you want these in to you by? It would be nice if, if they could be to me here in the next couple weeks. I, w I would take anything beyond that, but it would be nice to have the information that I need in a couple weeks. If I get something a week before the grant is turned in. So like by the next meeting? That'd be nice. And do they have to be Millersburg residents or can no. they be out of Millersburg? Okay. No. That's just Anybody I'm that's gonna, using the pickleball course. I'm gonna put it in a calendar, I think. And so, cause you guys aren't spending money on it, so I can put it into a calendar, cause that would get it out quicker. Brad, do you, uh, yeah. do you ever see Ernie Oliver during the week? I do. He plays down there. You can talk yeah. to him. And I, I know there's some other people that I could reach out to. Um, and talking to them is one thing, um, but having access to some type of, of text message, email, something that actually shows mm -hmm. individuals that are involved in this messaging. I just need to be able to document and show the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, at least from what I'm, what I'm reading, to, to show them this is the need. This is, these are names fixed to this document that have you know, a desire. They're coming to us. They want more courts. This is why. And anybody could just shoot me off an email that says, or drop off a letter, or, or a letter, mm -hmm. anything that's documented, a piece of paper, uh, or something I can print off to support the need for pickleball. And they, they actually wanted information that would actually show people that couldn't play because the pickleball courts were too full. You know, we don't have anything like that. So, I mean, just a document that says, you know, there were four groups down here and only two got to play or you know, whatever. Um, the more information I have to show the value of this project would be helpful. Does that make sense? Thank you. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. I have one thing. On, this will be old business. Our speed study, I think we should have done a traffic study that would determine how many cars are coming through and what be, would be a safe speed limit for them through town. Too late now, but I think that's what we should have done. Yeah, it was interesting to me that the old study counted traffic coming out of areas and the new doesn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. Um, Okay, we're gonna circle back because I forgot about the committee meeting. So the Audit Finance Committee, Tom? Uh, it was included in your package. So I'm not gonna read through the, the, the information. A lot of the information is uh, based on um, the committee meeting, the Business and Housing Committee meeting. That the, the minutes say the 18th, but it's actually the 16th. 16th. It's a meeting. Okay. Uh, so if anybody's looking at this, don't go, for, don't go from this date. Um, <laughs> You know, a lot of things that we're currently doing, uh, uh, one of the things that's out there is identifying things that we, we might need to uh, start setting money aside for, for projects, but I think that's gonna happen more toward our budget hearing time than, than this. Then uh, the village signage is the other thing, uh, working with the historical society to, to develop a, a new signage as ours as aging coming into town. So those are the major things on the, on the list. If anybody has any questions, to me or the committee, that's what we talked about. All right, thank you. Um, Records Commission met, sure did. Um, we just kind of went over our standard procedures for records disposal, retention schedules, things like that. None of this is anything that's changed over the past few years. Um, once a year, we do a, a pretty big um, records disposal, um, and we're working on that now. Um, so we'll do that, and then 
police department's also done theirs and the administrative assistants have, have also um, gone through and based on the records retention, um, dis, uh, destroyed records. So those are shredded um, on site typically. So um, other than that, there really wasn't much to report. Um, just kind of general information about records. Okay. Thank you. And we had the police committee meeting. Andrea. So the police commission committee meeting, we met um, March 28th at seven. Um, Chief Shaner and I were there. A couple of you of you were at the, our town meeting. Um, so Matt and I talked, Chief Shaner and I talked. Um, the goals for the year, he's got officers doing training, um, some in um, the um, crisis intervention, um, a rock with advanced OBI training, advanced um, crisis intervention training. I was happy to hear about that. Talk to him about community outreach a little bit, you know, making sure that businesses get periodically checked doors and things like that, um, where police presence in town is and all that. So there wasn't a whole lot. Um, I think we left it up to when do people want to meet again. So okay. he thought later, it's, we'll have to decide when we want to meet again. Okay, um, all right. We haven't really picked a date, but enough of us weren't there to, to do that. To do so, that. So, so we adjourned then at like 7.27. We talked for a while. Okay. Good meeting. That's great. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, new business. We'll start with communications with Northeast Ohio Gas. Andrea. Okay. Well, mine's, mine, what I'm going to be telling the community is not as much fun as talking about some pickleball or anything like that. I wish it was. Um, so this is going to be a few pages, so bear with me, but this is informative and I, the, the community needs to know about this. So I'm informing the village residents of what I went through and what many of you are going to experience concerning the gas lines in the village. My story begins in December of 2022 when I was informed I had a level one gas leak in front of my house. I went through a lot of aggravations with how the repair was handled and getting my lawn fixed. So fast forward to March 27 of 2024. I noticed a blue flag in my yard and blue paint marking my water line in my front yard. I called our village administrator, Nate Troyer, to inquire what was going on. He informed me that Northeast Ohio Gas was getting ready to replace gas lines. I asked him when, he said within the next 10 days. I feel that if Nate had known this, I should have been told. On March 28th of 2024, I received a call from Adam Campbell. I think he's with Bell Spire. I think it's Pipeline. It was a courtesy call. He didn't have to call me. Anyway, he thought I should be informed that beginning on April 1st, Monday, his company would be digging up my yard for the gas line needing to be replaced. He knew there'd be traffic issues and inconveniences to getting access to my driveway. He said it would take a few days. I immediately told Mayor Hoffey so she could put it on social media to inform residents because of traffic delays. On April 3rd, I received a call from Brent at Steiner Trenching. It was from him that I really became informed about what is going on in the village. He also was being courteous. He informed me that Northeast Ohio Gas was going to be shutting off my gas to reconnect the lines. This gas would, um, this would take a couple of hours. Then someone would need to be at the house so that someone from Northeast Ohio Gas could come into my home to relight my furnace and water heater. He also told me that Northeast Ohio Gas doesn't feel it is necessary to communicate their plans to their customers because it is their lines. He also informed me that Northeast Ohio Gas has a 10 year plan to replace the lines all through the village. I was shocked that this is the first time I'd heard of this. It was also the first time I'd heard that even after the repair that was done in front of my house, 16 months ago, I still had a gas leak. Makes sense. My grass is dead all along my sidewalk and up my driveway. So on Thursday, April 3rd, my husband went home at noon to be there when an agent from Northeast Ohio Gas needed in our home. Mike arrived at 4.30 p.m. and was using his gauge and informed us that we had a small gas leak that we needed to get a plumber in to repair it and our gas was not getting turned on. So now it is after hours and no plumber is available. Thank God we have a wood burner. It got into the 30s that night. 
On Friday morning, we were fortunate enough to have Pepper's Plumbing. I cannot say enough good about them. They showed up at 7.40 a.m. They, they put an outside shutoff valve, pressurized the line, and located two minor leaks and repaired them, which involved tightening the pipes. This took about two hours. Then I contacted the Northeast Ohio agent to inform him that we were ready to be hooked back on. I was told they would send somebody right away. However, no one showed up until 12.40. Then my husband is told that the gas company should have installed a regulator, which could have been installed the day before. It was necessary because a high pressure line is now providing gas to the house. The regulator they brought changed the meter location so it would no longer um, connect to the house. So Pepper's Plumbing attempted to modify the connection, but it still wouldn't connect. Eventually, this was remedied. The pressure tested the lines. My gas was restored at 3.30 p.m. on Friday. So here's the story, folks. A lot of you live in 100-year-old homes. We have a 100-year-old house, as many of you do in the village. Had we known that our gas was going to be shut off and, I would not be, and it would not be turned on until our gas lines passed a pressure test, we could have had our house tested in advance. Thus, I feel the residents should be given at least a 30-day notice of the possible shutoff of their gas so that they have an opportunity to have their lines tested before they have their gas shut off. So, so this is what I want all of you to be aware of. There is a 10-year plan to repair the gas lines in Millersburg. Randy, the head of operations, has confirmed this and has admitted to me several times that the communication with their customers could have been better. I want you to know that I'm doing all I can to make this a more transparent process and as painless as possible. When you see blue flags, yellow flags in your yard, call me or the mayor or Nate. I have contacted um, members of, I have contact numbers for the Northeast Ohio Gas and I suggest people have plumbers check their homes for gas leaks as a preventative action. For the record, I have filed a complaint with PUCO. I have been given a case number. They have informed me that Northeast Ohio Gas has 10 days to respond to their investigation. They are requesting the 10-year plan and the pipeline contractor protocols. They will inform me of their findings in the next two to three weeks. If you find yourself in the situation I was in or have questions, I am here for you. My number is 330-275-0876. Also, when they dig up your yard, it is Northeast Ohio Gas's responsibility to fix it. So if you go a couple of weeks and you see nothing, I will call the appropriate people to repair your lawn. I would like to commend and thank Bell Spire, Adam Campbell and his crew, Steiner Trenching, and Peppers Plumbing for their professionalism, courtesy, and making things whole at my home. Thank you very much, Andrea. I'd like to add one more thing. Sure. Um, so I go to the Millersburg pa Baptist Church down, and I needed that this week, um, down on um, Washington Street, and they wanted me to inform people in the community. On April 21st at 6 p.m., um, they have a Church Funerals Direct Network program. Um, so we are now enrolled in the Preferred Partner Program at Church Funerals Direct Network. This mission of Church Funerals Direct is to provide a better overall funeral experience at a greatly reduced cost, often half of what you would pay somewhere else. We are happy to partner with them in their mission. So on April 21st at 6 p.m., Mark May will be putting this on. Funerals could end up being half price, so like $4,800 or $5,000. So everybody in the community is welcome to this. That's at the Baptist Church? Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you. Chief and I are meeting with Northeast Ohio Gas tomorrow afternoon to talk about communication stuff, so just so everyone's aware. Um, other new business. Um, one of the things that I wanted to bring up and ask council about, um, I, I was contacted by Jason Troyer and the commissioners this week um, of possible high wind situation. They were expecting it to be worse than what we had a couple years ago. Um, 
so I put it out there because I've had a bunch of people um, in, in both trailer parks very concerned after seeing the tornadoes that went through um, Indian Lake. They're, they're very, very concerned about being in their trailer when we have a tornado. And so um, I gave them the option of coming up here. So I was wondering if we could collect some blankets so that if it's at night and our officers are here, they can come up and um, I was talking to the officers, the evening guys, and they said, yeah, we could probably put them in the hallway or send them in here, you know, um, just that they have a place to go. Now I know that um, it, it is an, an entire possibility that by the time we're notified, it could be too late for them to get up here. Um, so I have given them some other suggestions of ideas of places that are closer to where they live. Um, and of course, if it's during the day, you know, the closest local business would be my first option to wherever they are. Um, but I wondered if that was something that we could do just for precautionary measures to have up here um, in the event of emergency. My understanding the new health building is going to have a warming area or a cooling area. Mm -hmm. I would say that would be the number one choice because that's a natural disaster. Right. Which... And, and I talked to Jason about that and he said, so during the storm, they did have um, the homes, the EMA did, they were prepared for that up at the commissioner's office. And if, if we're prepared for something like that, then they will have it. They will have the health department open. But if it's after hours, it will not be open is what I've been told unless they know it's coming ahead of time. So I just think that we need to be in the future, but we need to be thinking of emergency situations and what we can do for our residents. Does, does emergency management have, well, I know they have it. I don't know how exactly the logistics of it works, but don't they have a contact list of, of churches that <coughs> they have available to them that they can reach out to in the event of people that need to be evacuated or removed from their homes. I believe that I believe they do. That there's I believe that they something do. Something in place for that. Um, and I, well, to backtrack a little bit, when we had this gas leak, I know Kelly had been in communication with me and we were brainstorming a little bit. Kelly was concerned about meals, um, lunch meals, dinner meals. We didn't know how long people were gonna be left out of their homes mm -hmm. and fortunately they were returned that day but and it was before noon mm -hmm. but kelly kelly had had reached out and she had a lunch plan we had a dinner plan <laughs> and it, it worked out that we didn't need either one of them but one of my conversations with her was do we have any like emergency funds here that we can use for that and I don't think we do, mm -mm. and we I wonder if we should, um, or if that's something, I guess, emergency management has access to that we don't need to get involved in that, but um, it's nice to have a game plan. It's nice to be uh, prepared, and um, that was unexpected, and again, fortunately, people went back home at a pretty decent um, time once they were actually removed and went down to the fairgrounds on their own. Um, so I guess my first thought is to reach out to Jason and see okay. what is available um, with other locations. I can do that. And in that setting, I think right across would be... Yeah, and that, yeah. that name came up too. Absolutely. Right. It did. And I think for long term, that would be a good situation. But the fact that it was for a day, that was, you know... Well, that was the same. What was going on in front right. of my house? That was all that the was same day. Going on up there. Mm -hmm. Right. That's same, right. Mm -hmm. That same was all day. the same and day. And honestly, the way that yeah. the way that, that Jeff and I, I mean, my husband's a senior citizen. My son has medical needs, and we were just told you're you got no heat. So yeah. really, that wasn't. I mean, Northeast of High Pass <laughs> care. I mean, they cared, but not. Right. 
I talked with Jason when we were out there Saturday. You're right, the churches are available. Mm -hmm. They have a number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Um, any other new business? Okay. Do I have a motion to go into executive session to, dis to consider the appointment of a public employee or official and details relative to the security arrangements and emergency response protocols for a public body or a public office? Mm -hmm. Second. Pullen? Aye. Hofstetter? Aye. Kellogg? Kellogg? Oh, yes. Okay. Shoemaker? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. And Khan? Aye. All right. Thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful evening. <clears throat>